It is the uh, season for being spooky. I uh, scared the poop out of my four-year-old Max earlier as he's walking up the steps. We have a little, uh, we have an old house and a little door thingy mabobber instead of like a peephole. There's a little brass door that opens high up on the door and it can hard, it's hard to see if someone's opened it and looking through it. And I was making noises as he was coming back from the farmer's market with his, his mom. And he stops and he gets into kind of this martial arts pose and starts looking around. I'm happy to know that my son is very willing to uh, take on any monsters that may come his way. All right, a lot to get to today. I love the Halloween season and um, just the fun and costumes. I've told you before, we grew up with no money. So free stuff was always uh, a big deal. And by, what I mean by that, we always went to museums, parks, the library, beaches, like free stuff, right? And one of those things that is cool to have as hand-me-downs when you're a kid or costumes. So there was always a lot of costumes. My mom's a fantastic seamstress and she would make costumes and they would be, we had this closet where all the costumes were. And it was one of my favorite times because it's something you, you know, you can always go grab a costume. And I know nowadays, a lot of them are branded, they're Star Wars or they're Avengers or something else that Disney probably owns. And that's great. Those are fun too. But these kind of generic costumes that like a wizard or things like that were always fun as well. And so when I think about adapting that to food, it's one of those things that I find to be super creative looking over foods and seeing what they might replicate for something spooky. So I thought technique of the week would be fun to just talk about ideas for spooky food. For instance, I saw a really cute thing. And since this is radio, I'm going to be describing some of these things. And I thought it'd be better to keep it simple. Uh, we all know that you can go out anywhere now for a breakfast or brunch, and they're going to have the ubiquitous avocado toast. Well, imagine instead of the you know slices that they do in the fancy way, it's just a smashed avocado, lightly seasoned, and putting that onto a traditional square piece of toast or rectangle piece of toast. Once you have that base of the green on there, think about all the fun things you can do with it. I saw a very cute rendition of Frankenstein, and you can use like cooked spinach as the hair and kind of uh, form that at the top of the piece of bread. You can use black olives for the eyes. Uh, you can use green olives, just a little slice for the eyes. For the mouth, you can use just a small slice of tomato, uh, these types of things. And it adds such a cute variant to a simple breakfast or lunch snack for kids. Super fun and super easy. One of my favorites that continues to be big this year are the little mummy pigs in a blanket. Absolutely adorbs balls for one and super simple. So you can get the small little uh, sausages or a uh, wieners, or you can cut uh, a regular hot dog into half or thirds, however you want to do it, depending on the size of the child that you're going to be baking these for. And you can get a ready-made dough, or you can make even a simple pizza dough, kind of three ingredients, uh, you know, salt, water, flour, a little bit of olive oil, these types of things, and then, of course, your leavening agent. But you can buy these things simple. You can buy pizza doughs. You can buy the pastry dough. You can buy, you know, the uh, croissant dough, all these types of things. Well, you cut them into small strips. Keep in mind, they're going to puff up slightly uh, in size. And you just take the strips and you wrap them around the hot dog as if it's a mummy. You cover the little head. So you leave just a little bit of the hot dog showing to put two little mustard eyes on it or something like that, that it just uh, makes it pop. You bake them off until golden brown and you serve them with ketchup or mustard or whatever you might want to. And they're super, super, super cute. I don't know what it is about them, but I find them hilarious. One of the postings I did 
on Instagram, and I'd love for you to join me there on Instagram at Fork Reporter, at Fork Reporter. And you know what? I'll find some of these to, to post uh, on there as well, and some I've done in the past that I'll explain. But the uh, the concept of taking a hot dog, and keep in mind that the flesh of the hot dog on the inside is more pinkish than the darker uh, coating on the outside because they've been most of them have been uh, par cooked or completely cooked all the way through so they've got a little darker color on the outside well you just take a sharp knife and you can cut a fingernail space and you pull that off and it will make it lighter there and you cut basically knuckle wrinkles in there and i've seen super creative some people will go to the extra length of taking um like an onion or a slice of almond or something and make that the fingernail but you bake those off that way and they plump up and the wrinkles sort of separate and then you put them in a hot dog with ketchup i don't want to hear it i know there's a bunch of people you don't put ketchup on a hot dog after eight years of age you do what you want but and you serve them with the ketchup and it's like this bloody finger on a bun it's Sounds rough, and if you go to the Instagram, let me see how far back I posted that. I had posted one that I found online that was just creepy and wonderful. Uh, it's about, let's say, nine pictures back. Um, but really, it gives you an idea of how creepy you can make something with simple foods, and it, it makes it extra fun for kids. You know, they're, they've opened up trick-or-treating this year, so you're probably going to go trick-or-treating, but if you're doing anything this weekend or next or throughout the week, I like to celebrate as much as we can and do fun things as much as we can around here. You could do these things as treats uh, for the kids and for the family. I've got some more ideas when we come back, so go nowhere. We're talking for Technique of the Week, Halloween or Spooky Foods, one of my favorites when we come back for adults and kids alike. So go nowhere. It is the Fork Report. I'm Neil Saavedra, KFI AM 640. Let's get the latest news now with Amy King in the KFI Newsroom. Talking about scary foods, how to, you know, kind of look at food differently over the Halloween holiday and, you know, make it spooky or fun for the kids. Maybe you're taking them out this year. Uh, Maybe you're not. Maybe you're having people over this year. Maybe you're not. But these are fun ways to make snacks during the week. Uh, I know we've got uh, a week left before, a week and a day left before Halloween. It lands on uh, next Sunday, a week from tomorrow. But I love spooking out foods. Another thing that you could do, but I, obviously with us being on radio, I'm describing things. So I'm using kind of light descriptions for you to get the idea. I will post some things on Instagram. I'd love for you to join me there at Fork Reporter, at Fork Reporter on Instagram. And I'll post some of these ideas as I find uh, great pictures or if there's there's ones that I've done in the past. So Technique of the Week is Scary Foods. Another fun thing to do is hot dogs. You can cut them in uh, to long strips. So you cut it lengthwise, turn them, uh, cut them lengthwise again. That'll give you four strips. Uh, of long pieces and as you bake them off they start to curl and they look worm-like and you just get a handful of those and put it onto a bun and you can make worm sandwiches or worm uh, burgers i like it isn't that fun yes i haven't heard that one before yeah that's a fun one that i saw that i really really loved because i've done there's um you can do like the monster version you can cut the hot dog in thirds and then while it's still raw and you get spaghetti pasta um, you don't want angel hair you want a thicker one but while they are uncooked you can pierce the bottom of the hot dog with them so like the lower third of the hot dog you just go through it sideways put you know five of those in or so and then you boil them and it cooks the hot dog and it cooks the pasta and then you get all these like stringing legs coming out of the head that is a hot dog and you put those in a pasta sauce like a red sauce and it looks like these little monstery squiddy type things uh which is kind of fun as well uh hot dogs work really well for all kinds of things because of their shape or is like fingers and things like that you could also if you want to make little squid looking things or octopus looking things 
is kind of the same idea as I said for the uh, the worms. Instead of cutting the entirety of the hot dog, go from about uh, one third down and then slice little legs uh, apart on the hot dog. And when you bake them, the little legs curl up and they look like little squid or little octopi or octopuses. No. Yeah, super cute. Super, super, super cute. Uh, a fun one that is very disturbing, but it's absolutely one of my favorites, is making uh, a meatloaf, whichever meatloaf you know your family has, whichever recipe you have. And then you form it onto a sheet pan um, into a hand. Just keep in, ma- in mind the proportions should be a little larger because it's going to shrink and you want it to shrink to the regular size of a hand. So you make the fingers, all of that. You cut a white onion and you cut it in the shape of a nail and you put that in as fingernails. And then you can do this either with the rounds of an onion or uh, I think it looks really good to take the the you know the very usually unused end um of a celery stalk and you shove that where the wrist is and it comes out about half an inch an inch and that is like the wrist bone uh and then you put the you know ketchup or barbecue sauce or whatever you like on there and then you put some cheese on top and you bake it up and the the skin the cheese is bubbled the uh, you know showing the skin and stuff like that and it's creepy if you want to do it even a little creepier, you can put um, some of the celery in the fingers too. So when you cut through it, you're, you know, going Ooh. through the bone. Yeah. Okay. It's all, it's all. You know what? Sensitive. It just doesn't surprise me at all that this is your favorite thing to uh, Well, celebrate. I will tell you, uh, Christmas is my all-time holiday, but Halloween comes in a great second because I love all these fun things to do. And there's just little, like, if you're going to make deviled eggs, great. Boil the eggs like you traditionally, w- uh, traditionally would. And then once they've cooled, you can crack the shell, and then you could soak them in food coloring before you remove the shell, and it will cause this webbing of like red or whatever color to seep through the cracks. So it looks like bloodshot eyes? Yeah, kind of oh, like cool. that. Okay. Exactly, and then you can you know make them traditionally. It's just a way of messing with techniques um, to have some fun. I saw something very creative the other day with chocolate chip cookies. So imagine you make chocolate chip cookies, and what they would do is they would place some chocolate chips on the top in addition, right before they baked them off. And then once they baked them off and they were still hot right out of the oven, they took a toothpick and pulled from the center of the chocolate chip out to make legs, like little spider legs. And you could make the chocolate chips look like spiders sitting on top of the chocolate chip cookie. Mm. However, most chocolate chips have um, an additive to help them hold their shape. So I would imagine they were probably doing milk chocolate or they were putting chunks of chocolate in there, like from a candy bar, which doesn't have the same, as much of the same, um, because otherwise it would be pretty difficult to get those thin stripes off of there. But I loved the idea. And so it's going to be one of those things that uh, uh, I end up playing with. You can also, on top of your and I've loved this, I've done this in the past, on top of your deviled eggs, you cut an olive in half, a black olive in half, and you use one half as the base of the body for your spider sitting on top of your deviled egg. And then you take the second half and you you slice it into little thin legs and you put those four on each side uh, and it looks like a, a black spider sitting right on top of your deviled egg. And it's just an olive, which you usually garnish. You could also do an eyeball um, with a a round slice from the inside of a pimento olive. And it's a green eye with a little red dot in the middle. You put those on top. Just have fun. There's a lot of fun things. 